All right, guys, so in case you're not interested in seeing Jurassic World this weekend, there's a little indie flick coming out called Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. So that's another option, and I saw it the other day. So let's talk about it. So Me and Earl and the Dying Girl is adapted from a 2012 novel written by Jesse Andrews, who also wrote the screenplay for the movie. And it follows Greg, Earl, and Hannah. So the movie primarily follows Greg, and other than Earl, he really has no true friends or enemies. He's just kind of friendly with all the different cliques within his high school. However, when Hannah, who is an acquaintance of his, is diagnosed with leukemia, his mom forces him to go hang out with her out of sympathy for the fact that she's got leukemia. It sucks. And what starts off as a very forced relationship ends up becoming a really cool friendship, which is inevitably complicated by the looming possibility of death for Hannah, as well as the overwhelming dread that Greg has for his future and you know what the hell he's going to do with his life. So first off, I really have no idea if this is actually faithful to the novel. All I know is that this won the Audience Award for U.S. Drama and the U.S. Grand Jury Prize at Sundance. And the trailer just made me laugh a lot. So overall, I was pretty excited about it. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. The first thing that I noticed was the performances. Oh my god, they are fantastic. Thomas Mann, who plays Greg, absolutely embodies his character. I mean, he is perfect for this role. He's perfect. I always appreciated him as being a nice guy, but I also really sympathize. Although he pissed me off a number of times, I sympathize at the end of the day with, you know, his situation, kind of the way he is. And which, amongst several things, is really getting too close with somebody and getting too close within a particular group. And what a lot of high school seniors have, which is totally understandable, which is this angst about what are they going to do post high school. But what was most enjoyable with him was just his comedic presence, his impeccable timing. I mean. He was just, he was always like so in the moment and some of the, some of the scenes with he and Molly Shannon and Earl, I mean, they were just hilarious. But to be fair, one of the main reasons why he and Earl's scenes were so funny was because of RJ Seiler, man. That guy, again, hilarious. I mean, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this actor before, but I'm telling you, we're going to see more of him. He is so good in this. And he does such a great job of being so funny throughout the movie, yet having substance and giving substance to this character. He's a man of few words, and most of the time when he does speak, he's just talking about feeling titties, but you know what? He still has substance. And Olivia Cook, man, I'm really a big fan of hers. I love her in Bates Motel. And there are a couple gut-wrenching scenes where her acting chops are really tested, and I'm telling you, she succeeds. I mean, hell, there's a couple times the sprinklers started coming on. And also, the writing by Jesse Andrews is fantastic. I mean, yes, her performances are fantastic, but they are really, really given a lot to work with from a writing perspective. All of this coupled with great cinematography, a few scenes where the actors are just filmed for like five to oh, ten minutes of just pure acting non-stop no cuts it's just them in the bedroom and they're just they're just acting it really creates an emotional impact that wouldn't be there if there was just constant camera changes face 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 no it just sits there and you've got them right here talking 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 camera and it's just it's really it, it adds something to it and it just elevates the scene from good to great. Honestly, this was looking like a whiplash situation for me, which is my favorite movie of last year. Total five out of five for me. I saw it six times in theaters. Love that movie. <laughs> and overall, I had very few complaints. That is about the first two thirds of the movie. Then the last third happened. So the thing about the last third of the movie is I've got two complaints. One is more minor, one is really significant. The minor one is that the pacing gets a little off for me. There, there was a lot going on in kind of a limited amount of time. The pacing was just not working for me. That being said, that's minor. What really screwed this movie up for me was the freaking ending. Now here's the thing. I don't mind the ending. I'm not gonna spoil anything, don't worry. You know what, at the end of this, I'm gonna put a spoiler discussion. It's gonna be after the Days and Confused outro that I put in, it'll be after that. So don't worry, no spoiler discuss right now. So what pissed me off was not the ending itself. The ending was actually beautifully filmed, and beautifully acted. What made me so mad about this is that it's made very clear by the narrator how this movie is going to end. Yet, while very convincing, I've seen enough movies, and ever since Bruce Willis lied to us in Armageddon, I've become a bit of a skeptic when it comes to the ending. Which, when you're sitting there being skeptical about what is being said about how this is gonna end, I mean, that, 
when you're doing that through the whole movie, it, it takes you out of the movie. If the ending was as it was said it was going to be earlier in the movie, then that's my problem. I shouldn't have been a skeptic. I should have just believed what they said. But they didn't. It's a total freaking lie. It's bullshit. But I apparently was right to be skeptical, which sucks. I don't like to be skeptical, and I don't like it taking me out of the movie. But it was, I was, I was right. Again, the ending itself, I actually thought was really well done. It's the, how they approached it earlier in the film that pissed me off. And before you say, oh yeah, but that's how it is in the book, I don't, I don't care. I couldn't, I couldn't care less. I, I, we're talking about the movie, and the movie just, it didn't work for me the way that they laid that out. Guys, so the first two thirds of this movie, this is a five out of five for me. And without such misleading buildup to the ending, this would have stayed on that track. But for me, I, it loses points. So overall, I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 out of five. It's a 1.5 drop from where I honestly saw this going. And that's very much because of the ending. But at the same time, I really enjoyed the first two thirds of this. And I'm genuinely curious to see what it's like after knowing where it all goes at the end of the day. So I'm curious and I will rent it inevitably because I want to see what it's like from that perspective now. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Take it or leave it, but what do you guys think? Are you excited about this movie? Did you read the book, not read the book? And was there ever an ending that really brought down the rest of the movie, a movie that you really enjoyed, but it just brought down the rest of the movie for you? If so, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you like this, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, whatever you like, and let's do this again soon, all right? I'll check you later. Check you later. Check you later. <laughs> hey, man, you off my case. Oh, man. Chicks don't want to hear that shit. Sorry about the hair, man. The freaking wind is just, just brutal tonight. All right, guys, long story short about this is that, you know, I expected Hannah to die at the end of this, hence the dying girl. And for some movies, the main character dying is just the exact right thing to do. I mean, it just makes the most sense for that character. And although it's sad, it's what needs to be done. Take Braveheart, for example. Totally sad ending, really hard to watch, exactly how that movie should have ended. Yet, at the same time with this particular movie, I just, I prefer that she live. I mean, I preferred that William Wallace live, but you know, again, for the movie, it made more sense that he died. And fortunately, Greg, who's narrating throughout the movie, he actually, to my surprise, makes it very clear. She survives at the end of this, and I was like, really? That's, that's awesome. Cool. That is until she dies. Yep. She dies. Screw you, Greg. And seriously, the scene in which it happens, I mean, it's just incredibly well done. I mean, it, it, it's some serious, like, art house type filmmaking, and it, it just, it, you're sitting there, just your heart is just being ripped out of your body, which is, again, okay, but I feel like I got duped. I mean, it feels it's like, oh, hey, I got you. Well, yeah, you got me. You told me that you should freaking die, you jerk. And I believed you. Good trick. Screw you, Greg. You know, I did have an emotional reaction to this. It really did have an effect on me. So I am looking forward to this when I see it again, when I rent it, and kind of, you know, now I know what happens at the end and see it from that perspective. I am looking forward to that. And if you haven't read the book, but you saw the movie, I'm curious, did you have the same reaction I had? No, yes, no, it's all good if you didn't. In fact, I'm, I wanna hear about it. Let's talk about it, comment section. That's what it's there for. <laughs> Seriously though, guys, thanks for sticking out this long. I appreciate it, it was a lot of fun for me, so. Hit me up in the comment section below if you want to talk. I'll get back to you pretty quickly, and let's do this again soon, all right? I'll check you later.